there are times when a solution to a problem is not very obvious and uh, in order to save a lot of time we need to combine seemingly unrelated things to get the given outcome. So in this uh, short tutorial I'm going to show you how you can abuse two very different aspects of Cinema 4D to get a very specific outcome, a very specific result. And uh, let's take a look. So I've created this uh, thinking particle setup. It's uh, fairly simple. I can link to the file if you wish to have it. And what it does, it emits some particles and every second or so, they just change direction. That's all they're doing and they're being traced by a tracer object. Now, what the problem is with a setup like this occurs when we take the tracer, right click and say current state object. I'm gonna take the resulting spline, cut it and put it in a new document. Now, this looks fine and dandy uh, as far as uh, what I was trying to make. But if you go to points mode, you'll see that every frame has a single point on the spline. So the challenge uh, I was asked to solve was how do I get rid of all the points that lie on a straight line, but retain all the ones that lie on corners. So it took me a while, uh, about five minutes, to find a solution, and that's uh, equal to an eternity for me. But I did find a solution, and uh, here's how you would go about it. You would make a copy of this spline. I'm going to turn off the first spline, and I'm going to deselect everything, or select everything, it doesn't really make a difference. Right-click, and uh, providing we are in points mode, I'm going to go and do a chamfer using flat, making sure that no points are selected. I'm going to click and drag in an empty space and just drag my mouse. Uh, please forgive these artifacts. This is not correct, but uh, the method is going to work anyway. And uh, I set the radius to something uh, ridiculously large because I don't care about the specifics of this radius as long as it's quite large. And let me show you exactly what happens after I've done this. Now we can go very close to where a point used to exist. Now if I go to this one here, you will see that wherever we had a point that was at an angle and not straight, only those points have been chamfered. Excellent. So what we have in this particular case, and it's not very visible, I'm gonna go closer here so we have a clearer view, and please again ignore these uh, white lines, is that we don't have that point here in the corner. And these points have sort of moved up until the point where they touch the closest point, and that was because the value of the chamfer was that big. But this now gives us the following ability. I'm gonna call th this spline chamf, and uh, let's call this or ridge. All the points now are the same except for the corner points, which don't exist for the chamfer and only exist for the original. So let me bring this down and let's go to the original and in points mode, go to select and set a selection. Now I'm gonna go and activate the use fields and remove the freeze layer. Now if I double click on this, you will see that nothing is selected because there was nothing originally selected when I created the selection tag. What I'm going to do in this field list is drag the chamfer spline. And if I double click on this, you will see nothing really happens because I need to select it. Make sure I'm in the layer tab of the fields. Change the distance mode to radius. And uh, again, you're gonna see these uh, weird artifacts. I'm gonna select the original one and the selection tag. Set the radius to a very small amount. 0.001 and the only reason we're not setting it to zero is that we may have some mathematical errors and uh, the method won't work precisely if there is a mathematical error but now what this is doing is taking each point from the new chamfered spline and for each point of the chamfered spline it will extend that search by 0.001 centimeters 
and if it finds any points on the original spline within that threshold, it will select them if we double click. And look at this, all the points have been selected except for the ones on corners. If I just press delete, now all these points are gone. Now there's one thing you need to remember is if I undo, you will see that we will remove all the edge points. So make sure when you're creating these splines to have a few extra frames calculated so that you don't lose all this segment. But nonetheless, with this new selection, just use your delete key in points mode to delete all the redundant points. If I hide this one now, you will see that now we have a nice spline that only has points where those angles were changing. Now, if I go and activate this, I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to go to basic and set this to a color. Let's make it uh, pink and let's go to the original and set the color to green. And you will see that they are pretty close. That little flashing you see means that they are exactly in the same position. But these end segments are all missing. But for what I'm trying to do, I've uh, calculated that and I've added a few frames to my particle simulation and whatnot. And uh, there you have it. We have uh, the problem which is now solved and our spline is nice and simplified. So I hope you found this uh, little quick tip helpful and it will save you years of your life. And uh, of course, praise me, share, like, subscribe and uh, do it again. Reshare, re like, and resubscribe. And never forget, Nose Man knows.